particularly dangerous situation, severe thunderstorm watch. See that Nick has already passed where the edge of the storm is, and I mean, he is still experiencing incredibly intense winds. Okay, shoot, we lost the window. We lost the back window. A rare, very rare PDS, or particularly dangerous situation, severe thunderstorm watch has been issued for almost all of eastern Iowa. We are talking about the potential for widespread 100 mile per hour wind gusts, according to the National Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center. So, here's what's going on. Here's a watch outlined in blue and includes almost all of eastern Iowa. There's a powerful line of storms going through the Des Moines Metro right now and is really going to race down Highway 20, Highway 30, and Interstate 80. So typically, you know, sometimes you'll see those radar scans with really high velocity values, but that's usually pretty high off the ground. And we were talking half degree just above the surface, almost at eye level with the radar, 130, 140. And that's when we really knew that we were gonna have some problems in Eastern Iowa. Because once you hit noon, there's really nothing slowing this thing down. You're just getting more peak heating and it was still sunny as we were leaving Cedar Rapids. So that instability kept growing and we really knew that there was really nothing stopping this anymore. Meet the storm, uh, likely on the Tama, or excuse me, yeah, the Tama Benton County line. And then we're gonna try and follow it across Benton County before it'll probably run over us west of Cedar Rapids. So we're gonna try and give the Cedar Rapids Metro the earliest warning that we can to kind of show you exactly what's gonna happen once the storm begins to hit. This is the powerful line of storms right now. You can kind of see that bow. That bowing shape means there's really strong winds occurring right in this area. So roughly from Highway 30 down to Interstate 80 appears to be the worst of the potential and it's moving almost due east. If we're talking about those uh, significant severe thunderstorm warnings, so those high-end warnings, there's a pretty good potential that we're gonna go what we call wall-to-wall -wall or continuous coverage as it moves through our area because we would treat these warnings very similar to um, a tornado warning just because their magnitude and their severity. Uh, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning which has been issued for a big portion of our area. We're talking uh, Tama County as well as Marshall and Powashik for 90 mile per hour wind gust. In fact, there was a reported wind gust of 99 miles per hour in Albion. 99 mile per hour in Albion, which is right by Marshalltown. That is a confirmed report of 99 mile per hour winds. But now we have a severe thunderstorm warning that has been extended across much of eastern Iowa here. So I'm going to get the specifics on this. Uh, and it is now including Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. We do have this severe thunderstorm warning for 80 mile an hour winds for Benton, Iowa, Johnson, Keokuk, Lynn, Washington counties. That's until 1245. So they are putting this out for an hour to give you that kind of notice. Uh, we are somewhere right about here where the mouse cursor is. Powerful line pushing through. Um, Tama County right now into now far western Benton County. Uh, this has again the potential for 100 mile per hour winds. Uh, all right, so this is going to be a, a real deal as it marches down Highway 30. Gotcha, yep, good luck and toss me whenever I'll be here. All right, bye. So again, we're doing some communicating behind the scenes, just getting ready for the new newscast here. Again, we are uh, driving west on 30 through Benton County, getting ready to intercept this storm. <clears throat> so I wanted to listen a little bit to make sure I can hear what's going on in the newscast. Cedar Rapids around 1230 to 1245, Washington around 1245, and West Liberty around 1252. Now, as these incredibly intense thunderstorms move through, uh, we are going to continue to keep an eye on things here. But these are very, very strong storms and meteorologist Nick Stewart is out on the road warrior right now and uh, you're heading toward these thunderstorms, Nick, and we have been seeing some incredibly, incredibly intense reports come out of Western Iowa. 
Yeah, right now we are marching west on Highway 30 through Benton County. I want to give you a look outside right now because you can already see the big shelf cloud here in the distance. It is a wall of water. It's essentially a hurricane over Iowa. Again, we had that reported gust of 99 miles an hour in the Marshalltown area. So we're about to intercept this storm. We're not going to push too much further because we don't really want to get in it. We want to try and stay ahead of it as best as we can. Uh, we can see a wall of water there. Torrential rain is also falling with the storm and very, very strong wind gusts. Again, we're talking at least 80 miles per hour with embedded gusts upwards of 90 to maybe 100 miles per hour. So we are right now on Highway 30 at about Highway 121 watching the storm very, very closely. Um, photojournalist Jason, if you want to just kind of pull off here on Highway 21, we're going to try and uh, set for a second, get you guys a better shot of exactly what's coming our way. But again, this is an incredibly dangerous storm. If you want to go on the right side, yeah, pull off the right. Uh, that is marching down Highway 30. So again, if you have loose objects in your yard, put them inside, get them away. Some good news that we are seeing a lot of traffic um, actually pulling off and trying to get out of the way of these storms. Ooh, I mean, you just look at this. These are incredibly bright velocity. So just to show you the wind, 73 miles an hour, 61. 77 that's just inside of the thunderstorm there 91 miles an hour showing up in some spots 66 I mean we have just incredibly incredibly intense thunderstorms ongoing at the moment that could be producing winds up to 100 miles an hour or greater meteorologist Nick Stewart is out in the road warrior right now and uh, in this area and Nick I don't know if you've seen other reports floating around on social media but we have had a just uh, numerous reports of power outages, trees down, and now you're out there watching the storms now. Yeah, I, I really believe it. Uh, right now, we're right on the leading edge of the storm. We are just north of Bell Plain by Van Horn, racing back east on 30. I don't know how well you can see it, but the corn in the foreground is almost being knocked completely to the ground. Very intense winds now racing down Highway 30. There's a lot of leaves flying through the air, a lot of damage. Look at all the leaves and debris flying through the air right now. The core of those winds, upwards of 100 miles per hour, probably about a mile or two behind us. So we're trying to stay out ahead of the storm, but I know at some point we're going to get uh, uh, munched on this thing. Thankfully, we're in a safe spot in terms of the vehicle. We're making sure we're staying away from power lines and trees, uh, but there's an immense a lot of debris, agricultural debris flying through the air, corn stalks. We saw big leaves of corn stalks. Look at these trees here. The corn is flowing uh, down as well. So really intense winds racing right now down Highway 30. I would venture guess we are probably about a mile or so ahead of the really intense winds, which the National Weather Service now says could be upwards of 100 miles per hour um, along what we call that bookend, uh, which is just on uh, 30 right now. It looks like there's a pretty good indication of very intense winds just northwest of Belle Plaine, west of Belle Plaine, uh, Keystone area right now. And this is coming right towards Cedar Rapids. So Cedar Rapids, we've been telling you, you need to take these storms very, very seriously. Uh, these storms will pack quite the punch. Again, we're talking wind gust upwards of 100 miles per hour, and we're already seeing indications of that on the very leading edge, Rebecca. Yeah, and Nick, we've gotten reports now in Marshall County of a 106 mile an hour wind gust. Now we have uh, this warning now, Sarah, for Lynn County for Cedar Rapids is for 90 mile an hour winds. This is for 90 mile an hour winds. So folks, we're staying here. We have a very, very intense thunderstorm. This is I'm treating this as if this is a tornado warning because you're going to have damage that's even more widespread than this. We've had this happen before that uh, we have seen intense damage and intense crop damage. You're likely hearing the sirens go off because we have incredibly strong winds. We have had confirmation of nearly 100 mile an hour or greater wind gusts twice now. So the National Weather Service says 106 miles per hour measured near Legrand. This warning for Benton, Iowa, Johnson, Keokuk, Glenna, Washington counties continues for 90 mile per hour winds at least. I think we're right on the leading edge of the really intense wind, which is just behind us now. Yep, just keep going east. And I think once we start getting into the really rough stuff, that's when I think we might find a place to pull over. All right. uh, go back out to meteorologist Nick Stewart in the Road Warrior. What's going on, Nick? Wow. <laughs> 
Hey, Rebecca, I think you just asked me. Yeah, right now we are on Highway 30. Uh, we're near the Van Horn area. Uh, we are... All right, here's the strong winds. We are just in the core now. All right, Jason, if you want to pull over safely, you can do so. We are now in the core of really intense winds. We got a big burst right there. Uh, you can see we are going probably about 40 to 50, and you can see the wind is going faster than we are. The rain's going faster than we are. Intense wind with this storm right now. You can probably see leaves flying through the air. That's debris flying through the air as well. Uh, Jason, let me get you a good crossroad here as soon as I can. Um, we got a road coming up in, again, you can see really intense wind happening with this storm. We got cars. This car is just in, in oncoming traffic. I don't know what this guy is doing. Wow. Okay. People, you need to get off the roads because I don't know what that was, but that was big problems. We got debris flying up the road with us right now. In about a quarter of a mile, we have a crossroad that we are going to pull off of. Uh, you can see winds are uh, ripping through right now. Uh, these trees are on the left, so let's slow down, Jason. Right, this should be our crossroad right about here. Yeah, go right. Yep, if you can. Actually, no. Watch out! Watch out to the right. Watch out to the right. You're good. You're good. Uh, so again, really intense winds right now. Uh, just we should be good here, Jason. Okay, we are now in the really intense core of this storm. You can just see how fast the wind is going right now. Uh, really, really intense wind uh, with the storm as it moves down Highway 30. Uh, right now, we are right near Van Horn. This is coming right towards you in Cedar Rapids. Very intense wind is flying with the storm right now. You can see debris flying up the road. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see power lines go down at some point as well. Very intense wind. Uh, Jason, if you want to pull up a little bit more, I'm a little concerned about the power lines behind us. You can go ahead, maybe about another 20, 30 feet, and we should be okay. Yeah, I think we're good here. We should be good here. Yep. So again, really intense wind with this. Again, this is right now just technically south of Van Horn on Highway 30. Intense, intense wind falling with the storm right now. I can pull up our wind sensor. The whole car is being moved as well with the storm. That was a wind gust of 72. We just picked a gust of 72 miles an hour, Rebecca. Yeah, Nick, um, I am just in that area here. So right around Keystone, right along Highway 30 down to the south where Nick is around Belle Plaine, uh, or sorry, Van Horn. 90 miles an hour is one of the radar estimates, and he's saying 72 mile an hour gusts. I would not be, I mean, you, you can see the corn bending, and you hate to see that. You hate to see, and you can just see how, how intense that is. And Nick is dealing with the, you can just no, see good, the good. incredibly low visibility, the debris, I mean, the car, the, a very, very big car being blown off. Uh, I mean, starting to see some debris there. We have seen so many reports of these homes and built businesses and buildings being damaged. And unfortunately, I mean, there, there's going to be so much loss on these crops too. So this is right along Highway 30. This is coming to the east incredibly quickly. And it is going to be an intense period of strong winds as it comes to the east here. So this is the situation. Very, very dangerous thunderstorm. This is nuts. We get to a spot. I knew we had no barns behind us. Uh, so that no sheet metal would come flying. Uh, we were well away from power lines. The only threat of power lines was on our right side, but with winds coming from behind us and from the northwest, those power lines should have gone away from us if they were um, to fall. We had a bit of a windbreak behind us as well, a line of trees to kind of soften the wind a little bit. Um, also, we were kind of on the lower end of a hill, um, so we thought those things would kind of help us from getting the really intense winds. We were able to account for pretty much everything except small rocks on the road that were kicked up by the very intense wind gusts. This is insane. Well, that's... Um, I don't know if Nick can actually hear me. I, that was the, 90. The storms oh, are very, very... We lost the window. We lost the back window. Okay. So, we're going to... If you guys can take Nick's mic down, we're gonna we're gonna let them uh, make sure they get to somewhere safe. But 
in, an incredibly intense thunderstorm is coming through. If you know anyone who's on the roads right now and that can get off of the roads that are on anywhere from around I-380 south of what Waterloo to Cedar Rapids, uh, on Highway 30, 151, Highway 6, Highway 1, I-80. Incredibly intense thunderstorms, very low visibility. This is a dangerous thunderstorm that is going through right now and going to continue to go to the east along Highway 30. And this is heading towards New Hall. You can see that Nick has already passed where the edge of the storm is. And I mean, he is still experiencing incredibly intense winds. I don't know if it was the wind that literally blew out the back window of the Road Warrior, but it, it looks like it's getting even worse out there. For the next 45 minutes, I'm sitting there with my rain jacket holding it against the windows, trying to keep water out as best as I can. We didn't want to flip the car around and face towards the wind because it's a higher profile vehicle. We thought we might get toppled over by the wind gust. So we kind of were just holding steady where we were, waiting for the wind to die down to flip around. And it just didn't happen. The winds just kept going for 45 minutes of hurricane force gusts. Okay, shoot. Yeah, we're good. We lost the window. We topped a wind gust of 99 miles per hour before we had to shut everything down. And I guarantee we had wind gusts probably in that 120 to 130 mile per hour range later on. The winds got stronger with time. Right as an MCV passed overhead and off to our north at east. And that pressure sensor that we have inside of our system measured a pressure drop from when we first encountered the storm uh, to when we turned everything off of about 25 millibars, a big drop in pressure. And so that just shows you how powerful that MCV was, that air velocity pressure built inside the derecho was so incredibly strong. And that helps explain why the winds were so intense with that storm. take Nick's picture. We don't necessarily have, oh, we don't have Nick's picture. So they had very, very intense winds going on there. And so I turned everything off and that's when the video goes dark. Now, part of the problem is built into that system is our communication method with the station. So when we turned off the whole system, we can no longer talk back to the station. And so when the signal went dark, they didn't exactly know what happened to us in that moment. And they became incredibly concerned. Um, about a good five, maybe 10 minutes passed before we were able to get in phone communication with them just to let them know that, hey, we're okay. Did get in touch with meteorologist Nick Stewart and Jason Meyer who were in the Road Warrior. They are doing okay, but they did go through that very intense storm. We finally had a bit of a lull in the wind and I told Jason, spin it, let's, flip this thing around and so we put the nose in front of the car and finally you know i can put my arms down and kind of just relax for a second and i just put my hands on my face and they were very warm to the touch and that's when i knew i've been bleeding now for 45 minutes and i had cuts all over my hands probably not so much from the glass when it broke out but as i was holding against the window I was likely hitting glass that was remaining on the fringes and I had a lot of cuts on my hands and my hands were just covered in blood at that point. And so it was like, okay, 
Uh, the wind's calmed down enough where I just kind of stepped outside, washed my hands off, and then at that point I was just kind of holding my hands above my head, trying to keep the pressure and keep it above the heart, trying to keep the bleeding from happening. And it did finally stop, but for a while there, I thought I might need stitches. And realistically, I probably did need stitches. Uh, but then we just kind of went into action, and we had to cover the storm. At that point, we had to do what we had to do. We had to do our jobs. Nick posted some things of he's seeing. Um, okay, so, all yeah, right, let's go. go to the peace scan do. So here's Nick in Van Horn. He is okay, by the way. <laughs> Barn has severe damage, truck blown off of a road, highway signs completely knocked over, and corn flattened. So here's the barn. That was a stop sign that was totally knocked over. Oh man, that's not what you want to see. Yeah. You can see the ears of corn too. It's just such a bad situation. So when the things begin to settle down, you know, we're trying to get back to Cedar Rapids. And typically when we come across damage as a news entity, you know, we get out, we film it and we keep going. And usually, you know, when you cover severe weather, you come across maybe a little bit of damage here and there. We stopped three or four times and it became pretty clear to us that this was very widespread. We weren't in a localized area of really intense winds. The entire drive through Benton County to Cedar Rapids, we were encountering power lines down, barns destroyed, just immense destruction, trucks jackknifed or overturned, a lot and a lot of damage. We were stuck in Highway 30, one of the main thoroughfares to go east to west across the state of Iowa. And I get a call from a girlfriend that's like, hey, I'm okay, but we lost our roof. And so, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in a friend's garage right now. And all of my belongings that we were able to salvage are here uh, in this garage. Um, and we're still technically homeless trying to find something and somewhere to go permanently. This was the first time that not only covering weather... Um, was I impacted, uh, but also personally. First time was personally affected as well. Driving down Collins Road into Cedar Rapids was really kind of heartbreaking. Um, I don't have a lot of video from that initial drive coming in because I was just in awe, just looking around at all the destruction and the magnitude of it. It was really quite remarkable. Um, I mean, y you see like a tree with its roots ripped up, and that's pretty crazy, but that was everywhere. I mean, every like, you were talking about maybe at least half the trees had significant damage, if not more. Huge branches down, and not just down on the road or the sidewalks or in the grass, but on top of homes. Then we rounded a corner, F Avenue, which is the street behind our station, because we're just trying to get to our station at this point. We didn't know how, because all the roads were blocked by trees. When we're coming down F Avenue, houses with roofs ripped off, and trees down everywhere, roof debris everywhere. And the magnitude of the storm really began to settle in pretty quick at that point. Monday, August 10th, and we were just absolutely obliterated by high-end derecho. Um, trees are down just all over the city. I'm going to try and get home, and I don't know exactly what I'm going to see here. Um, this is C Avenue. There's, I mean, every tree has damage. It's really kind of heartbreaking. Because one thing I love about Cedar Rapids, it's just trees. The trees are really quite beautiful in Cedar Rapids. And, uh, well, we don't have that. Okay, there's, I mean, it's not 
gained a lot of respect for weather that day. You know, it sounds cheesy and stupid, but you know, as a meteorologist, sometimes you think you're almost a bit invulnerable. You know, you forecast it, you know what's coming, you kind of get an idea, and then you get an event like this where it totally changes your outlook, where you lost control, you lost your home. Weather was personal at this point. It's something to, I'll never forget. I'll never, never forget that derecho on August 10th.